Hello and namaste everyone. This is Ravi and as promised, this is the day one of the 30 days of identity fundamentals at the Why Not I Am YouTube channel. So I would like to start off with the introduction of how I Am Identity and Access Management came into existence and its place in cybersecurity. So let's start with the story. In the 90s, companies only worried about firewalls and antivirus. But as the internet grew, so did the digital identities, usernames, passwords, accounts, and many different systems came into existence. So now the question came, how did the whole transition happen then? First, during the early 90s, you had passwords, you had local system logins. It was simple but quite messy. Too many passwords, no central control. Then stage two, when the actual boom started happening, there were multiple applications between 2000 and 2010. There was then a need for central directory. Then came the rise of single sign-on. We will definitely be discussing what is single sign-on and what is directories in detail in the future sessions. Then. Another key important came up into picture, which is the compliance. Compliance even now and even back then has always played a key role. Compliance like SOX, HIPAA, GDPR have always ensured that the organization's control is managed through the right set of practices and right set of processes. Stage three, which then brought about cloud and remote work 2010 onwards, we had the SaaS explosion, companies like Okta, Ping, Azure, Zero Trust, which means never trust, always verify. Terminologies like this started booming. And then you also had privilege account or privilege access management for admins, IGA. All of this started bubbling up, right, as a new world. So to summarize this, the evolution of identity and access management started with the early IT era. You had passwords and local systems logging in where the norm, it was a norm, right? Leading to password chaos. One of the main challenge was people had to store password on their personal devices on a piece of paper. That was definitely a huge risk, right? That, that actually created um, security risk across organizations. So hence, they tried to move towards a central directory. But even then, AD, AD, Microsoft AD became one of the main most commonly used central directory. And then SSO using AD became one of the most used technologies, right? Where you were able to log into multiple applications, primarily focused on protecting against compliance and security. And right now, in the current era from 2010 to now, companies use those technology, put them into something called as an identity provider or identity governance tool or privilege access management tool. And then we now see all the products like Ping, Okta, SailPoint, all of them flourishing primarily to solve the cloud and remote work problems that we see. And also to kind of ensure that the central directory is now being managed somewhere behind the whole IDP systems so that it is not directly exposed over the internet. Eventually ensuring that you're able to live up to the compliance as well as improve the security posture. So to summarize, the evolution of identity and access management primarily went from a world of passwords to now zero trust. Now let's move on to the pillars of cybersecurity. As this whole discussion is about how identity and access management is one of the pillar of cybersecurity, right? So let's quickly, again, for people who are new to IAM or in general new to the cybersecurity, let's understand what are the different eight pillars of cybersecurity. Yes, there could be at more or less here and there, but I'll just stick to these eight. First one is the network security, which primarily deals with firewalls and VPNs and IPs and IDS systems. Then we have the endpoint security, securing the devices, antivirus, EDR, patching, application security, protecting web and mobile app from attacks, OWASP, which recommends some of the top 10 
identity security threats there are code reviews threats web access firewalls all of this would come under the application security primarily you are trying to protect the application layer then with the cloud coming into picture we have the cloud security security workload storage saas pass all of that comes under the cloud security then you have the data security ensuring data confidentiality integrity availability which we'll be discussing in our next session encryption dlp backups all of this comprises of data security then comes identity and access management so even though let's say we talk about the network layer right then we have the endpoints lying somewhere here eventually applications been hosted on saas on cloud what you are trying to protect is the data which is inside the application but eventually when you enter you need a user trying to use their username and password to get access to that data and that's where iim comes into picture this ensures that because we know that we will be through firewalls and through edr we will be able to prevent malware or malicious actor but here it's a user either internal or external trying to access the system so how do we ensure that we block or actually ensure a safe way for those type of users that's where iim comes into picture ensuring the right people have the right access at the right time now in, within that also we have different domains identity governance privilege access management access management sometimes directories and certificates pki might also be considered on, around iim but predominantly there are these three working closely and we have products like salepoint savian cyberarc beyond trust octaping entra one login symmetry observe id many products out there been used under these subdomains then we have the security operations which is the seventh domain which has the detect response investigate threats seem so or any type of security threat is first been detected and responded and investigated on the security operations socks or secops or monitoring team <clears throat> and the last one compliance and governance eventually whenever an organization is formed you are definitely there is data lying around you are trying to protect but at the same time for a business to function properly compliance plays a major role if you're not compliant if the business is not compliant if the regulatory requirements are not met you will not be able to take the business forward even though you have the best security you have the best im system you have the best way of detecting monitoring the threats but compliance plays a major role here right so your organization <clears throat> will have to follow some of the other compliance whether it is gdpr or hipa or sox any of these compliance dpdp in india so compliance plays a major role and people or professionals who work in the compliance are definitely one of the reason why we are able to use the systems in the right way possible because there are best practices there is a tool knowledge that you may have and there is compliance and business requirement so as engineers as architect we should ensure that whenever we are building any of the product definitely we should use our knowledge product knowledge at the best of the ability in that understand the industry and see what best practices can be used but also make sure that whatever proposal we are giving that should be aligned with the compliance and business requirement we cannot build a product or a design which does not comply or does not meet the business requirement and does not complies with the compliance and regulatory requirements so with this i will sum up the day one i hope this was helpful uh, where we talk about the introduction of the evolution of iim and how in the whole world of cyber security where identity and access management falls under in the next session we will be talking further into what iim is all about and the breakdown from there Thank you very much.